welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There are major changes on the cards at both the Central Energy Fund and Nexa. Jen Screamer joins me to discuss the outlook for these energy-related state-owned companies. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. What is driving the changes at these two organizations? Well, at both organizations, the changes are really being driven <clears throat> by deep financial and op operational distress. We know that Nexa, the Nuclear Energy Corporation, the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation, has been a serial loss maker, and there have been both governance and leadership problems in recent years. And then at uh, Central Energy Fund, we've got the very troubled Petro SA unit, which uh, has not been operating at anywhere near its nameplate for many years, and yet it keeps employing the same number of staff as when it did operate at full nameplate. It's made about a 20 billion rands worth of losses since 2014. It's had no CEO for five years. Um, and so it's really a, a albatross around uh, the government's neck. So it's in deep, deep distress. And uh, the Central Energy Fund has been looking for some time to restructure. And it's also got the, this, the Strategic Fuel Fund, which we know had deep governance problems they illegally sold South Africa's crude oil stock a few years ago. So you can see it's a combination of real financial distress um, and governance weaknesses. What is the plan for the CEF group of companies and do we know the instinct? Well, the Central Energy Fund has now initiated a process of restructuring. We know the CEF is not only made up of the three units that are going to be merged now, which is uh, Petro SA, SFF and IGAS. There are a couple of other subsidiaries, including PASA, which is the regulator uh, for the petroleum industry, as well as the, a coal mining entity and some renewable energy interests. But at this stage, the decision has been made to merge the, the SFF, IGAS, which uh, has a stake in the Romco pipeline that runs from Mozambique to South Africa, and this troubled Petro SA into one. Uh, management consulting or experts have been appointed, led by Kearney, but it's a consortium that will oversee the development of a new corporate strategy, a new operational model, a new business model. And that uh, has really been given six months to come up with a new structure and the launch of what they're calling NUCO. And so we don't know fully what the end state will be for CEF because there are other units, including the mining company, uh, which uh, probably should not be within that stable, especially because it falls under the DMRE, the, the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, and uh, the DMRE regulates mining. So to have an operation, operational entity uh, and also being the regulator falling under you, I think is, is problematic. So we'll see wh whether that remains within the bigger CEF group. So we don't know the full end state, but they're talking about an integrated national petroleum company, which in the world of energy transition is a strange, uh, would be a strange beast to start forming at this stage. Uh, people are really looking at more, moving away from petroleum. So we'll see where it all settles and we'll see whether the petroleum main uh, is sustained in the future. Uh, I think it's premature to say that. But it looks like the future uh, of this merged entity will be very much gas aligned. So our gas, which already has a stake in the Romco pipeline, we know Sassel is selling its stake as part of its uh, asset disposal program uh, to deal with its huge debt burden. And uh, CEF has made it clear that they are keen on taking a bigger stake in the Romco pipeline. And uh, prior to the announcement of the, the, the merger uh, uh, process, uh, it was clear that CEF also saw itself playing a role in gas to power and the development of gas delivery infrastructure in South Africa and Southern Africa. But you know, this is a cash strapped entity at this stage, especially uh, with uh, Petro SA. Petro SA is going to have to go through its own restructuring and definitely it looks like there will be retrenchments at that organization. Similarly, there are major rationalization plans at Nexa. Yes, uh, again, a serial loss maker Again, warning, because largely because of uh, what's happened this year around COVID-19, that instead of you know, pulling back the losses and getting to more of a break-even position that the new board, which was appointed in February, was hoping 
to achieve. They're going to make a 331 million rand loss this year. That's the projection. So the, again, the ambition there is to rationalize the organization, repurpose it. So we've had in the past three boards, Nexa, Palchem, which makes fluor chemicals, NTP, which makes uh, chemicals, well, radioisotopes, which is used in nuclear medicine. Uh, that has already been uh, merged into one board. So there's a single unified board at the moment. And they're now talking about a single unified organization. They're going to be appointing uh, similarly uh, experts in, in rationalization, outside uh, expertise. That terms of, the terms of reference for that has already been placed into the market. So they'll be appointing uh, that entity soon. And the board has indicated that there's going to be a, a year long rationalization exercise, which is really about uh, well, cutting costs, probably cutting staff, especially at the management level. And uh, then also focusing very much on uh, shared services. So where the three organizations are three RT, HR, et cetera, uh, units, there's going to be a, a unification. Where Nexa settles in terms of its role uh, in nuclear energy is not yet clear. Um, we know that the previous board had major ambitions for that and restarting the nuclear fuel cycle. I think that uh, the new board and the new management are going to have to cut their cloth to the realistic financial situation. We know that they're an important player, especially in nuclear medicine, and we expect that that will be a major part of the new strategy and rationalized entity. But again, the end state of both uh, CEF, um, uh, those three merged entities, and NEXA, I think, will only become clear over the next few months, if not year. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering email newsletter.